Okay, so yeah, I know this is looking um, worst for wear, but come on people, it's a Nokia N73. <laughs> Let's be realistic, when am I gonna get another chance to test this device? Yeah, sure, they're pretty common enough, but really all of them are in a bad state of disrepair. And I wouldn't actually pay a couple of hundred euros for a pristine example just to f fumble with it for two hours and then just uh, remain with the um, expense. So I just got this from a friend of mine. Um, he's just keeping it as a nostalgia um, element, uh, a sort of a talisman or whatever from days past when phones were a bit more simpler. So um, don't worry, I know it's looking kind of dirty and disheveled, but actually I do have a working battery here. Here it is. And also the back housing um, piece. So I'm just going to put all of these together and see what happens. Well, actually I know what's going to happen. It's going to start up because I have charged the battery beforehand. One thing to note, this housing is pretty broken and uh, well, as you can see, it's got scuffs and marks everywhere. It doesn't really stay closed, but the thing about Nokia's is that even though they're ran over by a car, they still work. So check this out. Starts right off. So I'm just gonna let it go through its paces and in the meantime, I'll tell you a bit of, about this uh, device. It's of course a, a Symbian device. Nokia really uh, pushed this platform. Um, it's a smartphone, but with a keyboard. It's got a two point inch uh, TFT LCD display thing. It's pretty luminous. Uh, it's clear, it's uh, easily legible in sunlight. Um, well, that brings me back for the time at least. It was pretty use easy to use let's just skip through this part um, disregard the photo it's a memento so let's get on with it let's open the app drawer and see what we get so to my mind pretty crisp display um, all, all sorts of options here contacts messages agenda mp3 music player um, gallery and um, the camera. Now the camera is pretty interesting because um, right now I'm operating uh, the front facing camera. You can see myself here on the screen. And if I open up this port on the back, then it should switch to the other side. Pretty important, pretty impressive. I don't know if this was the first phone or one of the first phones to feature an autofocus camera on its system. So let me just try to open it up. It has switched to the front facing camera again. This one just does not want to work the front, the back, the back camera. I suspect it might be broken. So yeah, this is one of the reasons I haven't really prepared that much on, on, the, on the video itself. It's pretty um, disappointing to use such devices to get your hopes up in terms of, you know, creating content and, uh, well, <laughs> not being able to present the key feature. I was going to let you know that when this thing was launched, well, I really didn't think autofocus could be a thing on mobile phones. I was blown away. I never ended up using this device, this model. I uh, stuck with the N70 at the time of this uh, N73's launch or thereabouts. And uh, well, 
really a bit awkward and painful to say I didn't quite afford it. It was the equivalent of a few hundred euros, four to five hundred euros, I think. And I didn't really have that kind of a budget for a mobile phone, so I stuck with my N70, which was, well, it cost a bit, but not that much, around 150 euros or so. And uh, when, when this thing became affordable, I just stopped caring about it. I thought it was too mainstream. I'm a bit of a Siemens guy myself, so um, not really a huge fan of Nokia, but I do respect their tenacity in mobile phone, their willingness to work under any conditions. I had a couple of Nokias that were really in a bad state of um, <laughs> well, disrepair, but like this one, but they still functioned okay. So let's see if we can get some apps here. Um, radio, live blog, whatever that is, flash player, chat, maps. Yeah, so it features some maps. I don't know. Ooh, Nokia Max Maps. So check it out. It still has something going for it. Even after all these years, there's no network, so the phone is temporarily disconnected. Alas, there's no real possibility to connect this thing. I suspect the maps themselves are not even supported anymore. So yeah. Um, what can I say? The keyboard is pretty intuitive, although I would prefer a full QWERTY keyboard like the BlackBerry instead of this. Um, <laughs> well, this mess actually. The keys are too small even for my small uh, hands. I don't really see how I, how I could operate them easily and I suspect you could develop some sort of syndrome just trying to type messages all day long on these keys. You have to press uh, three times for uh, the third letter and so on. But anyway, that's sort of the phone. I'm sorry if I didn't present to you any um, specific features. I just wanted to reminisce. I don't suspect, I don't hold this thing to uh, the higher higher standard of uh, reviews so um, but on the other hand the battery still works some of the apps work the hardware is a bit uh, well it's a bit affected by all these years I don't know if the housing is original uh, I suspect it's not it's been replaced at some time in its life let's just turn it off and uh, check out the battery so it turns off right away. It's easily bootable. There we go. So the BP6M Nokia battery, a bit swollen, not too much. Still works just fine. On um, the model uh, and uh, well, any other useful or useless information as the case dictates. So yeah, not really that impressive. Now the age old question, does this thing have a quirky factor, this phone? Is it some sort of, you know, talisman or um, on the other hand, does it have a campy value? Well, uh, it's too well built to be considered something laughable. Uh, its willingness to function is quite mind-blowing in today's, uh, even in today's market where everything seems to be more, well, better put together and better built, better equipped. So Nokia's really stood out with this, uh, with this uh, characteristic. Would I like to own one? Um, yes and no, yes because it's extremely well built. Um, no, because I'm not such a Nokia, such a big Nokia fan. Um, I don't like the plastic fantastic build quality, but um, to their defense, uh, the phone is rather rigid. So yeah, 
Let's try to open up the, the camera app with this button, see if that will jump start it. Nope. So no, the button works, but the, the app does not want to go online. Again, it will be the VGA camera and nothing will happen. Let's take a peck. So yeah, the photo is, well, it's a VGA photo. So at any rate, it's not that impressive. I would have been curious to operate the back camera to see what photos it can produce, but alas, I shall not be able to do so. So another interesting fact, it doesn't have a jack support, so you can only charge it, I suspect, with the thinner Nokia um, charging um, adapter. I don't own one, I just use a universal uh, battery charger. Uh, there's no USB jack, so even, uh, I don't know, um, how many years ago, 20, 2006, so 16 years ago, Nokia was, uh, was thinking big and deleting some useless features on their phone, or at least uh, creating a trend. I don't know if that's true, but... So in terms of uh, technical um, aspects, this thing really pushed the envelope back then. It uh, sported a 2.4 inch um, TFT display with 256,000 um, colors. Um, it's really, I think it's bright enough in sunlight, at least it was for the time of the launch. That took me back. Uh, it's got a respectable 240 by 320 pixel uh, resolution, 4.3 aspect ratio. Um, and around 167 ppi, so pixel per inch uh, um, density, which is not bad at all considering the, the time of the launch. Check out the screen, it's pretty crisp. Um, the platform is a Symbian OS 9.1 S60, the third edition. The CPU, uh, it's, it's running a 220 megahertz dual mm -hmm. uh, ARM CPU, ARM9, so it's a dual core. Let's see the memory, so yeah, it's laughable at uh, 64 megabytes of RAM and 42 uh, megabytes of internal memory, though it is expandable with a mini SD slot. And also, uh, there's the branded Carl Zeiss autofocus um, 3.15 megapixel camera on the back, though this one is not working. So yeah, uh, it doesn't have a wireless connector connection capability, but it does have Bluetooth 2.0. Uh, no GPS, but Nokia maps were available, so presumably through WAP or another type of connection. And a stereo FM radio and browser and stuff like that. So the battery is a BP6M shown here with uh, 1,000 1, with 1,100 milliamp power capacity. So again, nostalgia factor through the roof, um, owning factor as a collector, yeah sure, if you're a Nokia fan or at least a fan of phones from 2006 and well the 2000s, pre-Android and pre-touchscreen smartphone era, yeah sure, go for it. I mean you cannot go wrong with this thing. Does it have a quirky factor? Well, not really. It's a straightforward design. Uh, a bunch of uh, buttons which today would be considered useless, but they were well thought out. Um, mainly this phone is interesting because it refuses to die. It's this indestructible, you can't really put your finger on it factor, but Really, Nokia's were built like tanks. They were built to last. 
Well, this has been the new Kia N73. I haven't actually purchased this one. I just bought, borrowed it from a friend. But remember, I just buy or at least borrow useless, quirky and obsolete tech stuff. So you don't have to. Thank you for watching.